Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how we detect exoplanets via a method called microlensing. And this is a really cool method. So the basic idea behind microlensing is, um, is actually general relativity. <laughs> so we know that mass bends the space-time around it. So this bending of space-time can actually create a lens, just like a typical lens that you might have in you know, a, a telescope. And it can magnify the light from an object behind it. And we've observed this lensing effect. This is a beautiful picture of a lensed galaxy. Not only is this effect pretty, but it's actually very strong. So if two stars are aligned, the brightness of the farther star can be increased by up to a thousand times. But in this case, it's not going to be exactly like these pretty strong pictures of the galaxy lensing, which is what, something that we call strong lensing. But we're talking about micro lensing, which means that we're not actually resolving the picture of this, what we call the Einstein ring. So this bright ring around the lens is called the Einstein ring. And for a galaxy, we can actually see that. But for two stars that are lensing each other, we can't see the, um, we can't make out that ring, but we can see as a point source that it gets much brighter. And that's that magnitude increase the magnification of the source star by the lens. So there's two stars involved in this. One is the source, so that's going to be the farther away one, and then one is the lens, which is what makes the source brighter. And we observe just a point of light that gets brighter in a kind of distinctive way that we recognize as a lensing event. And this lensing event only lasts as long as the alignment is right. And so it has only a certain duration as the stars are moving relative to each other and relative to us. So what does this have to do with planets? Well, if the star that is doing the lensing, so the star in between us and the source star, has a planet or a companion, that planet can also lens the source if it's in the right alignment. And so what that can do basically is even more increase the magnification that's happening during the lensing event. And so you see this as kind of a very distinctive spike on top of the lensing event that's already happening. So it's kind of a spike on a spike is how I think of it. So this is an example of what a microlensing planet signal would look like. And like you can see, it's, it's pretty distinctive um, to see this very small signal taking place in the larger signal. So one thing that's really exciting about microlensing is that you can observe planets that are far away from their stars. So all the previous methods we've talked about are much more sensitive to planets the closer they are to the star. And so we're really probing the interior regions of exoplanet systems. But with microlensing, we can see planets that are very far away from their host star or even not even bound to a star at all. We can see rogue planets with microlensing. And another advantage of microlensing is that we can see planets that are very far away from us. So with radial velocities and transits, we need to observe these stars <clears throat> in pretty great detail. And so we really do it for the closer star stars. But microlensing, we can look way beyond and into the kind of heart of the galaxy in some ways. However, the distance from us is very uncertain in a microlensing event, but we know that it's far away. But a big disadvantage of microlensing is that we only see it one time. So we see it when we have this perfect alignment between source and lens, and then it's and then it's done, and then it's over. It's a one-time observation, so we can't go back and follow it up and learn more about the planet. We just see it once, know that it exists, and that's it. We might be able to go back and do follow-up of the host star if we can identify it and know where it is, but that's not really a given, and in that case, we would not expect to be able to observe the planet because, again, it was a microlensing event that let, let us be sensitive to the fact that there was a planet that we wouldn't otherwise be able to detect. Another disadvantage is that these events are relatively rare. They rely on this really particular alignment, right? And that's not going to happen all that often. So usually to combat this, we tend to look towards the center of the galaxy because that's where there's the most stars. And so that just increases our odds that we'll actually see this kind of alignment that we need in order to detect microlensing events. So there are basically three pieces of information that we get in the uh, microlensing event, which is the maximum magnification, the duration or the Einstein time scale, and the peak flux. And basically what this depends on is the distance to the lens and the distance to the source and the mass of the planet and the mass of the star. So what we actually get out of this is a mass ratio. So we get the ratio, the mass ratio of the planet to the star. And we also get the separation of the planet from the star because we know that it has to be separated at a certain point to be able to fall into the right alignment. But this is just a 2D separation. So this is a separation on the sky, um, not a full 3D separation. So the first planet detected by microlensing was detected in 2004, and that was Ogle 2003 BLG235L. 
Um, and also known as MOA 2003 BLG 53 out because it was discovered independently by two separate teams. One thing that's really exciting about microlensing is that it's actually been used to infer the existence of a population of exoplanets in another galaxy. So we cannot observe um, transits or radial velocities of stars in other galaxies. Um, but with microlensing, they were able to look at another galaxy and infer that there had to be a certain population of planets to explain the signals that they got from microlensing. And so um, although there wasn't a detection of any individual planets, we know that other galaxies must have some exoplanets as well. So of the 4,292 confirmed exoplanets, 101 of them were discovered by microlensing. So that's about 2% of the total, and it's a fair number of planets. And like I said, what's really exciting about this is that it probes a different region of a planetary system than um, transits and radial velocity. So it's a really complementary method to helping us understand what exoplanet systems look like. Okay, so hopefully you learned, learned <laughs> hopefully you learned a little bit about what microlensing is and how we use it to detect exoplanets. And I hope you enjoyed and you'll come back next week. See you again soon. Bye. <laughs>